welcome everybody can you see me and hear me yeah let's see good audio good video wonderful welcome to our sacred self-healing training call workshop as i call them oh this is the wrong hang on a second wrong presentation no it's the right presentation hang on a sec that did not transport here one second how are you guys there you go all right this is a different one yes it slides just not the right cover okay all right again start over welcome everybody to our sacred self-healing training call and workshop today i want to talk to you guys about karmic manifestation and we will have more than just one talk about this uh, i called this mini series manifesting destiny and karmic manifestation is sort of the the pre phase it's it's where it all starts uh, we need to better we need better understanding of all this and uh, as always here yeah, my uh, background um, allows me to contextualize it differently for you than you may see this in maybe mainstream media or other spiritual writings or teachings or uh, what you know from other teachers so the way this goes here with our well, workshops is that it's um, interactive, yeah? So in other words, there's a little bit of lecturing for me, but many of you know this, I really like responding to you guys. So I wanna start out with a question, namely, what does karma mean to you? What do you understand as karma? And maybe some of you have done a little bit of homework what are some of the burning questions you have in regards to karma and with it the manifestation in your life like how karma interferes maybe or plays into or determines i don't know karmic patterns karmic attachments karmic manifestations who would like to break the ice and share what does karma mean to you what is your understanding and it's okay if you have different or multiple levels of understanding of it because i want to cover them all with you today so how do you understand karma or what are the things that you find confusing about karma what comes up for you when you hear the word karma who would like to share hi yona hi everyone hi cindy hi <laughs> so i was always raised as um what you sow so ye shall reap as okay. sort of a karmic um tag so to speak Mm -hmm. But I've learned over the years, um, like doing <clears throat> through energy work and education and whatnot, that it's to me, it's a way the universe balances itself out. Um, and that trickles down all the way to us being, you know, the microcosm of that. The, the like, hard like, thing. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. The hard thing is it's the unconscious karmic stuff. Mm -hmm. That's that's the tricky, tricky yeah. part. Yeah, this is where karma eludes us, right? Yeah. It's even if we have this kind of understanding, and I like this, the golden rule, right? It can sound something like don't do to others what you don't want to have done to yourself, or, you know, you shall reap what you sow you know, those kind of reminders that kind of remind us that, you know, there is some kind of greater cycle here and and what we put out, you know, somehow comes back to us in a way, in a mystical way. 
I say mystical way because the mechanics of karma aren't really fully clear to us. And I don't know if I can speak for you here, Cindy. I can speak for myself. Even though I was raised with a similar, you know, sort of not like a rule, but, you know, something along those lines. I always thought of myself as a good person. And yet I felt horribly punished <laughs> for for what I sowed. <laughs> so it didn't make any sense for me for the longest time. Anybody can relate to this. There was somehow this feeling of like, wait, there, there, this, 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 whatever the tallies are, they don't work out. This is unfair. <laughs> I'm in that with you. <laughs> yeah. Hands up. It, yeah. So it, it's in theory, I guess a quite rational kind of thing to say, but in our daily life, it doesn't seem to work that way. And you've already gave us the keyword here. The tricky part is the unconscious and uh, all the stuff that we are not fully aware of. What were some of the things, Cindy, that you've learned in the course of consciousness work and energy work? For example, about your own motivation. Let's dive right into it. <laughs> yeah, well, there it is right there. It's dive into it. If I wanna get past all of the things that don't work for me and don't work in my life, I have to do something different. I have to make that unconscious conscious and then choose to do something different from there. Yeah, so that would be, you know, based on wanting to change some of the patterns or um, whatever, you know, we call karma, right? And by the way, that's a very, uh, very good instinct here that is speaking through what you just said, because the word karma actually comes from, you know, out of the Vedic teachings, it's a Sanskrit word and it means action, doing something action it's basically you know the the well the consequences of actions yeah so you're right about that but that's already a very reflected way of looking at it the less reflected way of looking at karma would be something like fate or luck right i mean that's somehow you know, we all have our little superstitions, right? Like wearing red socks at our favorite football team's match, you know, so that they would win or, you know, doing certain things in a certain way. Because one time when we did it that way, it succeeded. And so we have these little things that, uh, some of which we are aware, yeah, that we try to repeat to recreate good luck. Yeah. Uh, then we have the superstitions, you know, which are mostly negative in nature, like the black cat going from left to right. I'm not sure. Is, is it from crossing your road from left to right or from right to left? I'm not really familiar with those, but some of these things or, you know, doing, doing things, uh, certain activities before certain dates and so forth, that those would create bad luck. And then there is obviously the the part of our own psyche that kind of mystifies things simply because they don't make sense. Yeah, something like, I guess then it's not supposed to be, or you know uh, whether or not um, it's uh, supposed to succeed is not on my hands. Yeah, uh, it depends on all kinds of outer factors, you know, that then determine and it, it, anything outer, yeah, external is kind of mystical if you think about it, yeah? So the moment you are referring to your own manifestation from within yourself, kind of like you just said, Cindy, yeah, where you see your own actions as the center point of what is being presented to you in life. Yeah, in that moment, it's not mystical at all. But for as long as you see things 
somehow coming at you or happening to you, yeah, which is if you want like kind of like an outside in perspective, then it all appears mystical. And th th this isn't just you, if, if that's something that maybe you've never really thought about it, but that's really the reason why so many people mystify and fantasize, all right? Because there is a, a, some kind of outer, you know, um, mysterium that makes things happen. And when we think in that way, then we are inevitably pulled into things such as injustice or unfairness or questioning ourselves or believing that we're not good enough. I'm curious, guys, raise your hand. Who of you has or still does, or in waves once in a while, thinks that the reason why certain things don't work out in your life is because you're not good enough? Who of you believes that the reason why things don't work out your way is because you're not good enough? All right, that's like a good 40%. Okay, lower your hands. Who of you, and this could be different group or the same, who of you believes the reason why things don't work out your way is because you don't deserve it? You don't deserve it. Now, there could be a link with not being good enough, but those are two different things, really, if you think about it. Not deserving something is different from not being good enough. Okay, that's a, that's fewer people. Who of you believes that you are not in control at all of what comes in to your life as circumstances or as manifestations? That is all kind of God's mysterious ways, that you have nothing to do with how things go, that it's all more or less predetermined and you're kind of like well almost like a cog in a machine you just like sort of i don't know tag along who of you believes that things are preset that kind of like no matter what you do you kind of end up in the same place anyway Okay, that's a few people. Now let's differentiate that view a little more as far as like predisposed or preset. Who of you believes that we actually do have a choice? Yeah, that there's something like free will versus everything that happens is faded anyway. So who of you believes that you have a free choice, that you have a free will, or at least in parts. That there is a choice part in there, that there's still a will part in there. Okay, that's the majority of you. Now, as far as that choice is concerned, who of you believes that everything that happens in your life is based on your act of choice? Or like, versus like a mixture, that there are some things that have to happen for some reason and some things that you can choose. And perhaps, you know, the big things have to happen and you more or less uh, choose the way how to get there. Personally, if I have to like formulate it in that simple way, that's probably the best way to represent what I believe in. Now, I've studied these things, and so I know what these different perspectives are. But for me personally, if I look at my life, I can see that there are some things that I can clearly choose. And I'm very aware of the choices that I have. And I see mostly everything as my choice. But I also know that there are some things that are just, they have to happen. They have to happen. Now, last month's theme of the months, uh, the energies of the months uh, in December were 
two self interventions. Remember, two self interventions are kind of like in between. They are signals, messages, cues from your true self to remind you of your inner truth. You guys all with me on that one? I mean, more or less, uh, we might we might not be able to identify a true self intervention as it happens, but a lot of times we can see something like that in retrospect. Have you guys experienced that? Like, you know, something happens and it seems like a total disaster at the time, but then if you actually allow it to unfold and you go with it somehow, I mean, you don't resist it, you just go with the flow, it turns out that this was one of the most important signals really that you could have gotten. Sorry guys, I got a little tech thing going on here. Let me just uh, force quit some of the applications that are running that are apparently taking up too much of my space here. All right. Yeah, so uh, in remote viewing, some of you may know this, that uh, I've also done uh, some, <clears throat> sorry guys, it's just in the way, uh, some training in remote viewing. And uh, there is a theory that I came across uh, that is called rocks in time. And rocks in time means that there is a lot of different paths possible sort of in that parallel or multiverse of, of reality, but there are some things that have to happen. And if I take my visionary abilities and training and compare that with all the teachings about karma, destiny, fate, uh, even uh, syntropy versus entropy, which is the more metaphysical explanation for certain things, I have to agree with the fact that there are some things that have to happen. They are in the nature of things. And even if we take the, you know, it's elusive still, even if you take, you know, like the mysterious part of that, like who determines uh, what has to happen, what has to happen. If I just look at it from sort of a divine nature way, and I look into nature and I look into the cycles and rhythms that are there. I have an intuitive understanding of, of these rhythms. Okay, there are rhythms that influence certain, I mean, anything from weather patterns to, well, day and night, you know, um, electromagnetic influences planetary influences on the larger forces and smaller forces. You know what I mean? There are so many cycles within cycles that I have to come to the conclusion that there is some kind of force, you know, that just sort of drives the whole thing, the whole universe. And the one common denominator in universe is that everything seems to evolve. It seems to continually evolve, even though there is a, there's also a cycle, a smaller cycle within a larger evolutionary cycle, which seems to come in waves, in breaths and out breaths, you know, building up and destroying, renewal and destruction. And even on an sort of atomic or you know, plasma level, today we know, <clears throat> today we know uh, that there is a part, hang on a second, I'm getting error messages here, that uh, the recording isn't working out. Okay. Apologize for these tech issues, no clue what causes this, so I'm just closing down every application that's still there. There you go. 
today we know that there is uh, on a plasma level that there is an, an constant sort of existence and non-existence in a certain frequency it's it goes so fast that we don't realize it but it also explains why some things are solid and some things aren't it doesn't really matter there are greater cycles that we simply can't perceive and therefore evolution in and of itself is elusive for us what does evolution mean for us what does evolution mean for you on a personal level in regards to your life what does evolving mean to you who wants to share you think of yourself evolving what does this mean to you I mean we have a cycle we have a life cycle as a human from I mean average life expectancy maybe what 80 probably dropped a little bit here in the last two years but maybe 80 years So there's a there's a cycle within that, right? And there's several stages, developmental stages, and um, desires, needs, and wants, and so forth. They kind of change with age too. But what does evolution mean to you? How do you know you're evolving? How do you know you're growing? Who wants to share? Hello everyone, can you hear me? Hey Sebastian, yes, I hear you. Perfect, hi Anna. Um, to me, uh, I was just uh, taking some time to reflect on this since uh, we can go with uh, the answer in so many, uh, so many different ways and different expressions. But at this moment, I feel that uh, probably the, the most it would resonate with me as fulfilling my uh, karmic lessons or um, okay. kind of um, allowing myself to take on karmic lessons and through that process exploring and discovering uh, what my true self um, means at this very moment if it makes sense how do you know yes it makes a lot of sense <laughs> and you obviously have 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 reflected on this already right because this is a relatively you know advanced view you know you, you you're mm -hmm. seeing lessons and you're willing to 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 take them on yeah uh, but there still is some kind of mysterium around this because and this is an honest question maybe you have an answer for that how do you know that you're fulfilling your karma yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> very, uh, you know, there are many different pitfalls, and of course, sometimes uh, I feel that uh, that's the lesson, but the lesson is uh, just around the corner. It's like a never ending mm -hmm. evolution of, uh, of the lesson, I would say. So it's like uh, just embracing the fact that this learning is uh, not about. Uh, getting i mean like uh, getting in terms of um you know uh getting to the uh, getting to the getting finish done. line yeah exactly yeah. it's like uh, the process by itself is ongoing lesson and by embracing that i feel that um, you know in some ways i evolve even for sometimes it doesn't look like i evolve sometimes uh, i'm uh, in the same i just uh, I had that thought uh, just a few hours ago that uh, I feel like I'm going through the same cycle uh, for uh, who knows um, what time. It's just like, you know, for revisiting the same story over and over again, but each time it brings a different aspect or different angle to the story. So I see it does, that. doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, know, I, yeah. Know, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So evolution uh, seems tricky, right? Because it's different from the word succeeding or success 
right? Mm -hmm. Success kind of implies that we get to a finish line or to a result. Um, e evolving kind of never ends, as you said. And uh, this is a very, very common or, or frequent question that I get. When does this ever end? You know, can we, can we make our karma go away? So we don't need to fulfill karma <laughs> anymore, something along those lines, right? So the ego mind kind of tries to contextualize it that way as a linear process. But uh, it's important to question this. Why are we thinking this, this way? Yeah, what would we do? I mean, guys, take this moment here to reflect on this. What would you do if there was no karma, say, if there was nothing predestined, nothing? If you had like a magic wand, and you could manifest anything you want. What would you do? What would you do? What would you it's do? Funny because all of the answers that are coming to me are coming straight from my ego. Oh, I go on a vacation. Oh, I would okay. buy an island. I... <laughs> yeah. How do you know that's providing growth? <laughs> How is going on an island on a vacation providing you with growth? That's maybe coming from a from a deficit that you have right now, right? Maybe you just need a break. And so you're thinking that, oh, okay. My biggest desire is to have a break and not work. Okay. Is that actually leading to growth? You see, we don't really know that. So if we actually had a magic wand and we knew that we had a magic wand, because we kind of do have a magic wand, but we don't know that we do. Yeah, but if we if we had a magic wand and we could manifest anything we want, would we really choose growth? Would we really choose evolution, guys? Let's define evolution here for a moment longer. There are some I was thinking about the word evolution, Yona, mm -hmm. and I don't think it necessarily well to use a measuring stick. It isn't always what would we be deemed as positive? I, I can evolve into a that. <laughs> really <laughs> shitty <laughs> uh, human being, which would would feel more like devolve, but evolve into something means change. It doesn't necessarily mean w what I would measure as positive. I, I could evolve. Evolve is a neutral word. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't inform about good or bad. So it's all yeah. about intentions and what it is that I align to and what my choices are. Well, and, I mean, it it has to do with, uh, you know, how we perceive the circumstances and, and what we manifest, the condition that we're in. Yeah. So you could say, for example, going through, um, uh, say you go through a rough patch in life and you experience lack, like say financial lack. And, uh, you know, let's say for like 10 years or something, and out of that lack, you're forced to come up with new ideas of making money, or you have to step into your creativity. You really have to, to sort of take things into your own hands, right? You may experience these 10 years of poverty or, or perceived lack as, you know, bad karma. Okay, but what if it is exactly what you needed in order to, and I obviously don't mean this personal address to you, Cheryl, you know, just in general, if it was needed for you to recognize, like say some hidden talents that you have, some, you know, creativity 
that allows you to make money in new ways that you would have never explored if, like, say, um, you had enough money and you you weren't quote unquote forced to do it. Yeah. So where is the good and bad here? How does this fit in? Doesn't, right? Because in the end, what you were forced to learn or step into, say out of a necessity, what you experienced as some kind of bad luck or bad, um, you know, devolution, like regress or something, ultimately made you grow as a whole, as a person, yeah, in other ways. Because we're looking at money, for example, as the material aspect of the physical. Yeah, but there's so much more. I mean, what about health, right? So many people have mastered, you know, material wealth, for example, but are in a very poor physical health condition. This is something that we are, uh, you know, dealing with now here during COVID times a lot. Yeah, where all the money in the world really can't change uh, certain consequences, like say, of comorbidities. Yeah. So uh, the same with emotional things. Alex, you you texting here. You know that uh, things th that you would like to manifest, right? So the first thing that comes to our mind is the stuff that we think we want the most. That's what we man. That's what we want to manifest. That's what we would do with a magic wand. But is it, for example, the right timing? Yeah, is it really that at this time in life, yeah, that you are indeed ready for a certain experience? Or is there something else that needs to be experienced before you step into, like, say, a bigger cycle? Like in your case, manifesting a family. Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for as long as history, as, as humanity exists, I guess, to determine when is the right time to start a family? I mean, in the old days, obviously, we didn't really think about it. You know, we reached uh, sort of sexual maturity. And at that point, you know, uh, we started to procreate. But uh, the more advanced our civilizations became, the more choices we started to have in regards to family. You know? And sometimes, you know, we just simply don't have the desire to have a family up until a certain point and so we don't prioritize it and then later in life we want to have a family but there are certain things that we may have not experienced yet yeah, that are important for the process and then again on the other hand you have these people that you know start having children when they're you know 17 18 19 20 yeah and uh, do this in a, in a super unconscious way and have family, but don't have necessarily family the way we want it. And here, um, it's very, very important that you qualify what it is that you want. So we're coming back to what Cheryl just said and also what Sebastian said to a certain degree. How do I know that I am growing? Yeah, or also what Cindy said, how do I know I have grown, right? And is there some kind of good and bad involved in this? Or is it just, like Sebastian said, a matter of continual unfolding, like, a, like the path as such, yeah, to get there? So these are the questions that have uh, uh, basically kept us busy here for as long as we have philosophers and spiritual teachers and so forth. Uh, one of the most fundamental works here is the Bhagavad Gita uh, from the Vedic traditions of Sanskrit. Um, and in there, it's being portrayed as uh, us having sort of 65% predestined karma experiences in our lives and 35% free will. But the karma always supersedes the manifestations, like the wishes that we have, so to speak. 
Yeah, and I like um, all your ideas here, Julianne, for example, or your, you know, what came up for you about evolution. We recognize our conditioning and change it and uh, recognize um, the new possibilities that open up through our change. Yeah, so every choice that we make opens up new opportunities. And so, if we don't make any choices, there probably aren't that many opportunities. So right here, you can see it's much more complex than linear, yeah? Linear means if I just do the same thing over and over and over again, I will eventually, you know, succeed or, you know, I'll just sort of continually get better at it yeah, and then eventually I'll be at master level. And this is true for things that are uh, sort of in the mechanical, in the material. But what about emotional? Emotional manifestations. Who of you has had, you know, let's say relationship experiences, you know, experiences regarding your heart, okay, that um, basically feel negative, that feel, uh, you know, painful, hurtful, sad. Yeah, and, uh, you know, even though you experience yourself as, as somebody who's actually trying to be of service, trying to be helpful, trying to, you know, be a good person, who of you has experience on the level of emotional manifestation let's say from a linear perspective more pain or more hurt than happiness if it was something that could be measured in a transactional way or in a quantitative way yeah that's that's a little bit more than half of us yeah, so that's interesting, right? So it's, it, it, you know, love and relationship is not something that we can practice uh, and uh, kind of get better with every relationship. Have you noticed that? It doesn't work this way. Now, why is this? Some of you have already answered this here in the chat because there sometimes are karmic ties or karmic attachments or things that, um, just keep repeating, yeah, keep repeating. And I suppose, I mean, those of you that talk about karmic ties, I suppose that you have an understanding of what that means. What do you call a karmic tie, Julianne? Can you define this for us? How do you know something is a karmic tie? <clears throat> Or anybody. I mean, you, you you all seem to have thought about karma and karmic stuff quite a bit already, I can tell. But let us question it. Let us go into really investigating what we mean with this, what we understand. I, I'll yes. speak to that, Jonas. There yeah, has yeah, been there has been a, a pattern in my life to find uh, people with addictions because I am attracted to that as a codependent. Um, that's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. And um, so there is a propensity, a karmic propensity. I, I, I feel brought forward from past lives um, to deal with um, addiction in my life mm -hmm. via other people. And I'm pretty sure. How many sure repeat cycles did it take you to realize that? Oh, shit. <laughs> Roughly. I mean, just asking. I just had a curiosity. Oh, that's I mean, it's, a really it's, good it's, question. It's good I, I, I uh, I've been married, well, I'm married again, I've been married three times, and I had numerous relationships in between then, and there was a very, very common thread all the way through that I, mm -hmm. <clears throat> pardon me, couldn't see, and that was even being in um, Al-Anon and blah, 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 and then I mm -hmm. went, when I finally came through on the other side and could see very clearly, there's no doubt in my mind that in past lives, I was an alcoholic, no doubt about it at all. Mm -hmm. So I could see the karmic propensity, but I couldn't see it until 
there was a certain level of self-healing and maturity and ownership of the whole pattern on I like ownership on the other side. yeah mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm six you... now it took oh. a long time it took a long time <laughs> yeah I, and i hear from how you talk about this that there was this ownership that there was an accountability that you recognize that you know in spite of all these different experiences with with different people involved uh, that there was one common denominator and that was you yeah yeah so that's that's the part here obviously that shows to us that it's not that simple yeah so when we say karmic we have to be careful because uh, you know, you used the word uh, predisposed, but is it predisposed? I mean, um, psychologists would disagree. Yeah. Well, you have I would say pattern, behavior pattern, and that keeps manifesting. You know, sort of the same kind types of relationship. Right? I don't know. I would say, from a karmic perspective, that was something I needed to work through. So, predisposed mm -hmm. or not, that word really doesn't count right now. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a karmic propensity that that is something that I've chosen to work through in this lifetime, then I don't know if you call that predisposed or not. I I I, I call it both. Like if that was on Cheryl's checklist or Soul Self's checklist before I landed here this time, then it's like winning a lottery <laughs> because I think I figured it out finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you, here, here is something, uh, a new aspect that I hear uh, uh, between the lines, and that has to do with whether or not somebody is aware of this. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have, um, you know, things that repeat. Yeah, so Becky is defining uh, karmic ties for us here. She says similar familiar relationship patterns and behaviors with one another. So if, if they start repeating, right? I mean, then there's something there that obviously informs us that, well, kind of like, like, a, like as if we have to repeat a grade, right? If we have to repeat a grade in school, it's because there was something there that we didn't graduate in. Yeah, there was something there. Uh, I, I'm trying to to avoid the word lesson, but you guys know what I mean, right? There was something there that we didn't master enough to move on to the next level right and so uh, we had to repeat the grade yeah in in our relationship lives this could be you know the same pattern of behavior with the result that we attract the same kind of person yeah you know, and, and basically manifest the same results over and over again this this is something that we might be able to reverse engineer like you did Cheryl I did the same thing. I could clearly say that, uh, you know, I've lived in different countries. Um, I was, uh, you know, lived in different cultures, different languages, uh, really different circumstances and outer conditions. And yet my relationships always kind of end up in the same place. Okay. There was no, this is beyond uh, sort of statistically insignificant okay so i had to look at that because the only constant in my life was me yeah and uh to talk about comic ties uh, we just need to be careful here because a lot of times people use this as an excuse uh to not look at their, their own choices here okay so yes there might be propensities that we can explain for example with psychology yeah so psychologies psychologists will say that for example 85 percent of us will marry or feel attracted to a person that resembles our primary caretaker and his or her trauma that's amazing right so there is something there that kind of makes us want to re-experience something until we get over it basically until we get past it yeah until we do something differently now when it comes to childhood experiences so that's what psychologists base this these statistics on yeah it's a form of conditioning with a sort of a, a pinch of karma 
yeah so that we try to re-experience the original trauma or the original wound so that we can heal it and for that we need basically the partner that resembles these behavior patterns that we were conditioned with uh, at a very very early stage namely our unconscious state so if you take all this and put this together and we're trying as always to stay neutral and i'm uh, trying to to guide you through the epistemology you know the investigation of of the existence of this word and existence itself yeah and how we get there so that we can form our own internalized understanding about it so repeats are not necessarily karmic types repeats can also just be psychology guys but repeats often are linked to our childhood trauma so is karma and that's why we often see karmic stuff in conjunction with say inner child stuff and the only question that we can't fully answer is if we actually had karma before we came to this world and if our childhood then manifested out of that predestined karmic cycle so in your case Cheryl you said you, there's no doubt in your mind that you must have been an alcoholic in your previous lifetime yeah um uh, how was uh, the alcoholism or addiction um how did this play into your childhood growing up any kind of addictive addictive behaviors uh there was no alcohol in my family of origin at all uh, my mother was addicted to um uh, she had depression, and so there was lots of medication in the house. And there was my... substance addiction, just not alcohol, but substance. Yeah, yeah. Substance and my abuse was there. Was a classic narcissist. So we have a depressed mother, a narcissist father, and interestingly enough, I, I have three sisters, and they all married alcoholics too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So alcoholism obviously is one of those addictions that, especially for for. Uh, as older folks, right? Uh, it was one of those substance abuses that were actually socially accepted, and it kind of still is in most of our cultures, if you think about it. Because from a toxicological point of view, <laughs> it really shouldn't. But from you know, from a, a social and cultural point of view, uh, uh, drinking alcohol and even <clears throat> drinking lots of alcohol, and every day, for example is not necessarily seen as a bad thing, okay? It has created generations um, of children of alcoholics with uh, very, very similar problems. And obviously psychology is catching up on all that and realizing, you know, that uh, basically uh, the presence of alcoholism, the presence of mental illness, the presence of any kind of substance abuse and the presence of narcissism, for example, um severely influences the rest of a person's life all the way to determining longevity how long a person lives yeah so these are uh summarized in these adverse childhood experiences the aces yeah there's a video on youtube where i explain the um, aces in uh, conjunction with uh, trauma load okay so for those of you who would like to know a little more what research says about people who have had those kind of experiences or those kind of exposures actually the exposure to these things in early childhood and what the tendency is they are statistically for these people what kind of um, behaviors they're going to be engaging in. So we have to differentiate here between conditioning. Yeah. So you, I hope you understand the conditioning um, and how that's different from karma. Conditioning is something that I was exposed to at a very, very early stage of my life that has created a certain level of, of normal for me, like a baseline of normal. 
Yeah. In my example, I've mentioned this before. All males I knew, including my brothers, including my uncles, my cousins, obviously all boyfriends that I had were alcoholics. In fact, in my mind, there was no doubt. I guess until like 25 or 26, 7, that all males are alcoholics. I kid you not. Yeah, I was, I mean, obviously intelligent to know that this isn't entirely true, but as far as like what I attract in my life, it was 100%. And therefore, my ego concluded that it must be a general phenomenon. Yeah. So this is the way how our ego then interferes with those conditionings that could be potentially harmful for us. It normalizes them. You guys understand what I'm talking about? How when you grow up in certain circumstances, no matter how unhealthy they are, yeah? Yes, they, they can, and this can also be play out psychologically as false belief, but uh, whatever I accept, sort of as the normal conditions when I am a very young kid, like zero to, to five, all right, will later in life not really jump out at me as, you know, dysfunctional or toxic or unhealthy for me. Yeah, so our baseline of normal, and this is the reason why uh, statistics are clear that people who have had a lot of adverse childhood exposure that the reason why they engage in, in riskier behavior and, and behavior that's uh, that has a tendency to be more unhealthy and more dysfunctional is because it's the baseline of norm, it's the norm for them, yeah? And so they don't realize that there could be anything wrong with this. And those of us who have had quite a big sort of percentage of adverse childhood exposure, be it through emotional, or verbal or physical abuse or adversity growing up, our sense for that is skewed. Yeah, so we are experiencing a psychological um, uh, influence here uh, that is common to all humans. It, it just plays out in an individual way that predetermines our choices. Hmm. Hi, yeah. hi, Yona. Alex here. Yeah. How you going? Hi, Alex. Hi. <laughs> how are you? Been been a while. <laughs> yes. How are you? How's How's Australia? <laughs> uh, Australia's uh, different at the moment. That's for sure. Yeah. It's. Um, I'm in Western Australia, so. Um, you yeah, just had the hottest bit... day in history, I think, yesterday, wasn't it? Um, that might have been on the east coast. Yeah, I'm I'm on the west coast. But, uh, no, yeah, no, it don't matter. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Good to have you here. <laughs> How cool you're checking in. Oh, look, every, you know, I mean, every, everything you're talking about, it's just um, so relevant for me right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, in in so many ways, um, you know, relationships. Um, you know, like you say, feeling you know, what your baseline is and, you know, it's only really just been coming to me to light that, you know, I've just let um, people cross my boundaries for, you know, and that's just been normal and, and sort of living yeah. and attracting people who are going to let me down, like, you know, which is coming from my father and, and, you know, basically, you know, a lot of that stuff growing up by myself and thinking that's normal not to have any support and do everything myself and not to mm -hmm. love and, and yeah and then attracting the same relationships over and over which are almost identical it's it, yeah it gets to the point it's scary where, right it's chat, scary how identical yeah. they are <laughs> it's yeah like i said in the chat i, I feel like i'm in the twilight zone and, yeah. and you know i think we've we've chatted about it before and it's almost yeah it's uncanny exactly the same women the same circumstances the same way that it, the breakup was um but yeah it's it's brutal when you're kind of like going well shit like what are you what am i doing wrong like you know i'm, I'm trying to attract um you know someone that's supportive and have, have a family but keep um yeah just going down that same hole yeah it's sort of like 
one step forward, two steps back, you think you're growing a lot, and then you, I don't know, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm getting older, but I'm getting young, almost, more, I don't know, younger at the same time. It's crazy. Well, I mean, who says we're not growing, even if we're in a repeat cycle, right? I mean, even repeat, they have a, a tendency to spiral up. Yeah, there's, there's this greater cycle uh, of life that uh, kind of always pulls us into growth, you know, even if it's a minute growth, yeah? But every experience, I mean, you can see it now, the way you, you talk about it, experiences and the repeats, yeah? It is now absolutely clear to you that there's a repeat. A yeah. few years ago, you know, or relationships ago, it may have not been so clear to you. Yeah, no, this one is different. No, this is all very different. And here <laughs> you are now, right? And look at, oh, it's absolutely the same, the way they came about, the way it played out and the way it ended up, right? So sometimes it takes us a few repeats to be yeah. able to see that. So that in and of itself, Alex, is gross. Okay? Yeah. Because there, and I don't know about you, but there is nobody or it was or couldn't have been a single person in the world convincing me, yeah, that um, what I am doing is repeat. Yeah. Yeah, so there's we have internet issues apparently. I I, I suppose because yeah, it just dropped out. That's okay. Yeah, but audio is still good, right? Let me turn off my video camera. If you guys, <laughs> not this is a very sad picture of me, but <laughs> not because of that. <laughs> to save some, to save up some bandwidth, okay, so that we have a good recording. Yeah, so um, we have to recognize that there's not necessarily no growth, okay. In my experience, there's always growth, but sometimes it's just so slow and so minute. And if we have a lot of emotional suffering along with it, well, then our ego obviously doesn't like it. There's also things here, uh, such as the question that you see on your screen is old and new karma, right? Is there maybe something you know old that needs to be resolved that is maybe prenatal, you know, from before this lifetime? And is there new karma that I am adding? Right to my choices, uh, through my choices, and all these questions. I'm not going to give you answers for this. I'm, I want you to learn how to investigate those for yourself. All these have to do with you answering the question. For example, who, who is in charge of karma, and is karma something that needs to be ended? Does it have to end? Yeah, who has the authority over karma? Is there some God that kind of measures, you know, like the Santa song? Yeah, um, how does this go? Like, um, he's watching every step you make and stuff like that. Who judges, yeah, whether or not you fulfill your karma? Yeah, and you know, with it always the question, well, what, what then? Yeah, is is the goal to end karma, or maybe the goal isn't to end karma? It's really, really important for me that you guys go into this way of thinking with yourself and investigate this. If karma has to do with action and has to do with taking responsibility, accountability, recognizing that we have a conscious choice, all right? Do we want karma to end? Now, Cindy brought in the aspect of balance. So if the benchmark, yeah, like the parameter on which karma is, is playing out and maybe even the intensity of karma, say, um, measured by how balanced things are or how imbalanced they are. Let's say the more imbalanced, the more karma. The more balanced, the less karma. If that is the case, yeah, is the goal balanced then? And if balance is the case, well, how do I know that things are balanced? Do you know what I mean? You're going to have to really ask into your beliefs 
yeah, to find out the truth for yourself. It's very important that you know the answers for this. And at the core of this is obviously something like, you know, the, the question that always needs to come when we investigate something, I mean, how does something form? And here I want to invite you to another reflective thought process. Who of you believes in something like an afterlife? Like that you have the physical life here, but that there's kind of like an afterlife, like after you're physically dead, yeah, after your body dies, that there is some afterlife. That's a majority of you. Okay, so if that is the case, if there is an afterlife, we have to ask ourselves, along with all these other questions about karma, well, does karma matter for the afterlife? What do you guys think? What are some of your guys' thoughts about that? Or is karma only about the afterlife? I don't know. What do you guys think? And when it comes to afterlife, then obviously the, the question of reincarnation and maybe past lives comes in. Some of you have already mentioned this here, these words. How does this all play together? So I sometimes uh, jokingly say in energy updates or uh, you know forecasts or, or other workshops, that some people believe that life, our physical 3D life, is like an auditioning for the afterlife. Do you know what I mean with that? Yeah, that, that it's kind of like all oh, just about the afterlife, which mm, some of these uh, of, of the religious teachings kind of make it look like, right? If you look at the Christian belief, for example, and it's very similar uh, to the Muslim uh, to the uh, Islam and the Judaic uh, uh, beliefs, whereby the Judaic belief is a little different, um, that it's all about what happens after you die, right? It's all about whether or not you get into heaven. Yeah. And it appears, at least, you know, on the surface, that most of what is written in, in say, Christian scripture uh, is about you know, how to get to heaven, yeah, what to do in order to get heaven. So if that were the case, then it, there would not, not be any karma, really. There would only be the goal of getting into heaven and, uh, you know, sort of being done with this lifetime, with this cycle that you just mentioned. Now, who of you believes that when you're done with karma, wherever karma came from, that you're done, that you don't have to come back. Who of you believes that when you're done with your karma, your etheric self is giggling? <laughs> that's, that's funny. How, why is it giggling? Because as much as, you know, a lot of the teachings that you just um, talked about, uh, religious programming, et cetera, et cetera, really does teach that, that there's yeah. nothing else while you're here and then we graduate to heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, I know for me and my belief and a lot of people in our, our group here that we're not just a body with a soul, we're a mm -hmm. soul with a body. Therefore, heaven and earth are the same. It's how we're perceiving it in whatever fashion. So the karma is not the afterlife. The karma is the here and now and the after and everything in between. Yeah, so this is then, you know, you, now we're talking, guys. Now you, you're really stepping into your own insights and into your own consciousness. Okay, because the problem with these pre-programmed beliefs is that we're taking them on without even ever reflecting about them. Okay, uh, there's a lot of people who believe that uh, the goal is to end karma. But 
when you ask them why, you know, they say, I don't know. Well, think about it. Underneath that thought process that you want to end karma, what stands underneath that? What, what's behind that? That you experience your life, your 3D life as a struggle and that, or punishment even, and that you don't want to come back. It makes you, yes, exactly, like Becky. It makes people believe that being here as a human is not desired. It makes you reject your 3D experience. What if it's the opposite? What if the whole purpose of you being here in 3D is to learn to embrace 3D? So when it comes to fully wanting to understand karma, guys, there's no way you can understand karma if you don't have a solid understanding of what defines you as a being. So if you believe that there is something like, let's say that you are just a 3D being, yeah? And you don't believe in anything spiritual, and you're just like a worm, you know, you get born and then you die and there is no impact on nothing. You're a solitary unit. Obviously, you, you have relationships with others and, and, and you interact with others. But as far as like your existence is concerned, you know, you're a random occurrence um, uh, that leads to your existence. And then so a random occurrence, you die. And that's it. You poof away. You don't need to think about karma because karma does not fit into that model, into that materialistic model. Yeah, because in that model, all that matters is self and narcissism. Yeah, it's run by fear. Yeah, because obviously you have to deal with your mortality. So you know that there's an expiration date on you. And so you try to what? Live your life based on maximum gain of whatever. Maximum gain of whatever. <laughs> okay, because once you've reached your expiration date, it's over. That is what that worldview or life view actually expresses. You don't need to worry about karma. You don't need to worry about consequences. This kind of life view is very narcissistic in nature. Yeah, because it doesn't see yourself as part of a greater unit, so to speak, or, or a, 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 you don't see yourself in connection with anything. You see yourself as a solitary unit. Anybody who has, in, in, be it an intuitive or trained understanding, that you are connected to other beings, and that there is an impact that you have on life, yeah? And that uh, there is perhaps a multiple um, sort of reality or, or I, I don't want to use the word multidimensional, but you know, that you can exist here in the physical as well as in the spiritual, for example, or the slightly more material version of energetic, yeah? So not everybody, wants to use the word spiritual being yeah because it sounds religious to them but uh let's just agree that we call spiritual anything that's in the unseen okay so spiritual etheric or energetic you know is fundamentally the same because it's it's all in the unseen there's only very few people who can differentiate the the, the different levels of the unseen but let's say you agree yeah that there's more to you than just your physical being. Now, let me let me just
Yeah, hey guys, I'm back. Okay, can you guys all hear me? Oops, let me see. Yeah, so I got kicked out. <laughs> can you hear me? We can hear you now. Oh yeah, okay, wonderful. Yeah, sorry, thanks for staying. Yeah, I, I just got kicked out. So there's some internet issues here. I apologize for that. <clears throat> So who of you believes that you that there's nothing no that there is something beyond your 3D that when your physical dies yeah that you continue to exist who of you believes in that okay that's most of us so if that is the case and karma is relevant if we believe that we are 3D only, that we are material only, karma is irrelevant. Because then there, it would be the, uh, uh, it, we, don't, we wouldn't have to put this into account. Yeah, because we, we won't have to deal with the consequences. Okay, so karma is only relevant if we actually have an understanding of ourselves as an energetic or spiritual being. Now, the question is, how can we connect with that spiritual being that can inform us or verify for us or, you know, basically sort of let us know, yeah, uh, about like whether or not we're fulfilling our karma, whether or not um, there's something that we have to experience, like these rocks and time that we have to go through, yeah, whether or not we are actually forming karma or not. Yeah, so this is something that. Uh, we need to um, be very aware of you know, that when we believe in something beyond the 3D, that there must be some kind of greater law or order, if you will, okay, that records all of that. Now, in uh, the, the, the ancient uh, scriptures and so forth, the, you know, that we have available, there is a talk of like the Akashic records. You, you probably heard about this. It, it doesn't actually matter how you call it, but something like a, like a sort of an, an, an oval universal database that records everything. Everything that happens in... 3D, that we do in 3D, that we think, that we feel, that we um, express, that we say, yeah, that we dream, okay? And everything that is basically, uh, be that is happening and that is being done, remember karma is the word for action, yeah? Or acting, actually, it's the process of acting, yeah? That everything is recorded and that everything in the end has to equal out. Yeah, Cheryl is commenting here. Hawkins says, Have every hair on your head is counted. Yes, that's the overall, I mean, most spiritual teachings uh, really assume that there is something like that. And visionaries and, and spiritual seers, a few of them can actually read them out. Yeah. Two self interventions, Cindy, are then the 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 communicational sort of middleman. Yeah, that those are things that only we can feel. Yeah, a true self intervention is something that it, it seems maybe random to the outside person, but there is a piece in that that we recognize from within that that is our truth, that this is bringing us into more truth or reminding us of more truth or, or steering us towards something that uh, leads to a higher expression of ourselves. So uh, evolution, the, the question about evolution and, and, you know, what this actually means, yeah, uh, has a lot to do with the higher expression of who we are. Somebody said, I forgot who it was, that there's always a different angle or a different perspective on things. Yeah. Uh, if you look at that in a, in a neutral way, it basically says 
you are who you are, but there always is a better you possible. There's sort of a field of all possibilities. And the more conscious choices you make in life, yeah, the more you basically step into this. And the more conscious these choices are, yeah, the more choices you get the more choices you have and the more willing you are basically work to work with it, the less imbalances you produce. Why? Because if you are consciously involved in your decision-making process and you are aware of your actions and the consequences of your actions, what kind of actions will you more likely choose? Will you be more likely to repeat the same stuff over and over again that led to the same experience of pain and loss or letting down or betrayal or sadness or lack? Or will you be more likely to say to yourself, well, I've tried that and that kind of produced that outcome. I want to try something different. And then you try something different and then you compare all the different ways that you have chosen and you come to the understanding that what has basically led you to the, the best outcome, not the best as in the most convenient or pain-free, but the best as in the most conscious and the most sort of self-sovereign um, um, outcome, namely an outcome that you have desired. So what I'm trying to show you here is that um, your karma forms pretty much every single time you are creating more imbalance. Yeah, Every time you are unconscious, every time you are um, doing something against your own integrity, you're doing something against your better knowing. Yeah, let's say you're doing something against your better intentions. Or you're simply not trying at all. Yeah, you're choosing something that is, um, well, I mean, I don't want to bring in judgment here, but you know, that's basically lazy. Yeah, where you're not choosing at all, where you're just letting it all play out. Yeah, so that's fundamentally, yeah, the idea of stepping into your own manifestation process is that the reason why you want to do this is because if you don't step into your own manifestation process, you are more likely to manifest karmic stuff karmic stuff that has accumulated there that um, basically just, you know, plays out as continual repeats. So if you look at, um, you know, evolution as something where you step or gradually step into your higher potential, into your higher expression, then you will not really want it to end because you know that there always is another level. You know that there is always a higher expression possible. This doesn't mean that you have to feel like a loser if you don't, if you don't, um, if you're not able to step into your higher expression, but it means that you have to just simply take on the challenge. So that you can step by step move into, you know, your, higher potential. Now, your higher potential might not necessarily coincide with what your ego thinks as the better manifestation. What are some of the things, Cindy, you mentioned this earlier, but what are some of the things that your ego um, deemed as good manifestation? It usually ended up being, as the ego does, um, everything was not good manifestation. It's like, oh, you know, bad karma here. 
But when I made a choice to do something on my own behalf, um, like go back to school or whatever, then I was creating a higher expression and then hopefully helping my karmic load. Well, I mean, you don't know that yet, right? But yeah, it I definitely is a challenge, right? It's definitely something different in your personal life. Yeah? Yeah. You're doing yes. something? Okay. So uh, that said, I mean, when you answered my question, you didn't really answer it. You just, um, uh, you judged it. Okay. You said, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, when, when your ego's will uh, is basically manifested, yeah, that it always turned out bad. But let's uh, uh, let's describe this with a little more precision. Okay. What does our ego always favor? Avoidance of pain and the seeking of pleasure. Right. So these are some of the paradigms on which the ego operates, right? But let's be a little more practical here because that, that's a theoretical or, or, or clinical term, right? What does it actually mean in your in our personal lives? Oh, staying in a bad job or staying in a bad relationship. Oh, we don't we don't necessarily see it as bad. We just see it as the same, right? So the ego definitely favors things that it's familiar with. Yes. Yeah. No matter how bad it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. And 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 the ego also basically doesn't like change at all. Right. Yes. I mean, like any kind of change, like even a different breakfast cereal, <laughs> right? Yes. There'll be resistance. <laughs> yeah, so ego doesn't like new. Ego doesn't like change. So we got to be aware of that. That's not just you guys. That's everybody. That's the nature of our ego. Ego wants things safe. Right? Yes. It, wants, it wants a guarantee. <laughs> Ego wants things convenient. It doesn't like struggle. It doesn't like challenge. It doesn't like uproar or unrest. It, it just wants things to just go easy. Ego, ego likes shortcuts. Right? If you had a magic wand, I mean, Cindy, you said it earlier. <laughs> what can you think of? The only thing you can come up with is like, <laughs> take a break, going on vacation, going on an island. I mean, come on. Really? Yeah. You no, have a genie that, in a bottle I mean, and you could come up with, oh, I want to go on vacation. <laughs> that's the first, yeah, the first inkling. But here's the interesting thing with this discussion is there's a part of me that loves to go harder that if I, you know, do more, I'll get someplace, you know, better, I'll get someplace, not necessarily faster, but, you know, the, the struggle and the, the... But does that have anything to do with karma? No, that's conditioning. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. there is a belief, a mindset in you that says something along the lines, you know, you have to go, you know, in order to do better, you have to do harder, you have to do more. Yeah, that's true. I guess that isn't really karma it's the ego actually that says that yeah yes that's what i was saying is that the ego can go from one end of the pendulum to the other just mm -hmm. like that but it's still ego no matter what color you color it and never really never really growing right exactly in the process you know because the the main purpose of ego is really to maintain things the way they are so we got a problem here, guys. <laughs> and I tell you what the main problem is and why these questions are so difficult to answer. Because ego isn't interested in growth. Ego is not interested in evolution. It just isn't. Which means whatever it is that you deem as good or bad or painful or awesome, you cannot be sure. That it really is something that serves your growth. And if you cannot be sure if something serves your growth, well, then you don't know if, if you, you know, you cannot know if things are in balance. You cannot know what you create. You don't know what you create. You're completely unaware of the karma that 
is playing out. But let's stay positive. Let's go back to the understanding that there is something like a divine order, yeah? Being in nature, yeah, that wants things to grow, that wants things to evolve, that wants all beings to basically develop into their own higher expression. Let's just take that here for a moment and investigate that. What would be our highest expression or higher expressions as human, as individual? Give me some ideas, guys, how you see this. What would your higher expression be? I mean, what is it actually that we're striving for? Even those of us here who have spiritual awareness and who have already, you know, spent a great deal of thought about this. What's your higher expression? Give me some examples. Serving others without gain as opposed to the opposite um, ego serving itself, which would be the narcissistic life view. Yes. Yeah. Maximum self gain. Yep. All right. Now, let, now let me a, uh, ask you sort of about the dimensional aspect of that. Are you referring to the three D existence? I am referring first to the three D existence, mm -hmm. and then up the layers from there because it's all related you you can't you can't take them apart but there are certain things here in 3d that have to be addressed um you know the maslow's hierarchy you got to make sure you got food shelter okay so you 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 taking the 3d existence as sort of the imminent thing to deal with <laughs> right it's, it's like the here and now right yeah the here and now and exactly that needs to be de dealt with first okay i take that one all right but what about the multi-dimensional aspect of you so fulfilling those things within me like doing what i love doing mm -hmm. um you know things with other people that connect me to other people and um i know it sounds super cheesy but you know for the for the greater good mm -hmm. of the higher expression mm -hmm. yeah because you're not personally benefiting from that not really right but there is a spiritual component of that again here spiritual is sort of you know beyond the physical right yeah. where you you somehow get an impulse or or have an understanding that if you do that in 3d they would also benefit you on some other level. Yeah. Maybe on the level yes. of connectedness or the level the, the spiritual level. Yeah. Even, you know, if, if our, if we look at it from this uh, sort of rather limited uh, sort of tally point of view, right. It gives you good points. It gives you good points. In, in the points in heaven. <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about because I, I, I feel that fulfillment here when I do that in the here and now too. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel that? Oh, in my, in my core of cores, in my heart. Okay. So there's something about our, our heart as a measuring tool. Yeah. For like kind of when we work toward our higher expression, that signals yeah. that back to us. There's a feedback loop there. Yes. But when we yes. do something, mm -hmm, when we do, this is really, really important, guys. Good job, Cindy. Yeah, you've just basically had that insight out of yourself that this is how it goes. This is how it goes. There's a feedback loop between your physical existence and your, say, non physical existence. And you can feel it in your physical. You get a feedback here. Yeah, when it's a, it's it, people typically call this fulfillment or happiness. Fulfillment and happiness is formed out of you becoming aware of when you are moving into a higher expression. It's extremely important to understand because if you judge 
your manifestations based on your ego only and based on 3D, say, accomplishments only, well, then, yeah, you have to come to the conclusion that you are not good enough or that you don't deserve it or whatever. You see? The reason why you question yourself, that we, not you, you, but all of us, yeah? The reason why we question ourselves, why we constant, why we're constantly tortured by this, this question whether or not we deserve something or whether or not we're good enough has to do with a confusion about what, uh, what defines our existence. So if you define your existence as 3D material only, then you have to question that you're quote unquote good enough. Uh, why is that? Because there's always people that are better than you or have more money or I don't know, that are prettier or younger or whatever than you, always. Yes, Julian. It reduces your striving to getting and having and owning. As opposed to what Cindy just reported about, sort of a measurement of, of fulfillment, fulfillment or happiness through whatever you know it, it is for you. This isn't exactly 100% the same for all of us, but close. There are some things in life, and Alex, you brought in, you know, family, wanting you know a, a, a sort of a fulfilling relationship your job would be in conjunction with with conscious manifestation as opposed to karmic manifestation to define for yourself what you're actually seeking when you think of wanting to have a family because if if it's only about the having or getting or owning, I mean, some people actually look at their family, at their children as something that they own. Yeah, they objectify it to materialize it. Well, yeah. Then it might, you know, appear to you that you are not good enough to have a family. But if you, instead of looking at it as a gettingness, Look at it as an expression, as a mirror, as a reflection of your own inner being. And what comes with it, the way you want to feel, the way you are sort of visualizing this in, in your inner mind's eye, the imagery that you have from what it's like to play with your kids, to, to kiss your wife goodbye, or to have dinner together. And you hone in on that feeling that comes with family. Then you're consciously manifesting. Then you're actually st actively stepping into that feedback loop with your spiritual self and you're informing your spiritual self about how you want to feel. what you identify as your higher expression as opposed to focusing on what you don't have the lack of something this is as i mentioned many many times 99 percent of the cases when people feel like they cannot manifest what they want in life it's because of that because they unconsciously Focus on what they don't have and then make it a matter of seeking. And if you make your manifestation a matter of seeking and finding, then you're in trouble. Because you are basically honing in on what you don't have and the negative feeling that you no longer want or that you try to avoid. And that, guys, leads to continued karmic manifestation as opposed to using the power of your consciousness and the power of your choice 
and saying, this is how I want to feel. This is the kind of feedback that, I, that I'm aiming at. Even though I don't know what kind of form that could have, but this is <clears throat> what I want this to feel like in my heart. My heart as sort of the, the bridge piece between the physical and the spiritual aspect of my being. Then you're stepping out of karmic manifestation and you create something new. You consciously co-create. So the difference between conscious manifestation and karmic manifestation, those are just words, but we have to use words to differentiate things and to exercise this tool that we have that we call consciousness. The difference between unconscious manifestation and karmic manifestation is, uh, sorry, conscious manifestation and karmic manifestation is that in the case of karmic manifestation, you're letting your ego run the show and you're basically reducing yourself to the material 3D being and life only. Conscious manifestation contacts the spiritual level of your own being and includes it and basically looks beyond just the physical 3D. And this is then ultimately the choice that we have. We can choose to see ourselves just as a 3D being, which in 99% of the cases, reduces us and our striving and our accomplishing, our seeking to getting, owning, having. Which is also part of a darkness that I have described in some of the other workshops. It's the harmonic darkness in us, yeah, that objectifies us, that materializes us, that sees us basically just as a lifeless sort of cognitive machine, you know, singularity that doesn't interact with anything. Or the other darkness, the other extreme, where we just see ourselves as a spiritual being and neglect the 3D experience altogether. Or we refuse to partake in the 3D expression of who we are in the spiritual. Both extremes are dark and pull in darkness and with it pain and struggle and suffering. It is in the middle when you can find the balance between the two. When you basically experience yourself as karma free. Because there's no longer a predisposition. You no longer have a, an unconscious bias. You are consciously co-creating the world and the life that you are experiencing. And that cannot be an abstract, guys. That has to be felt. It has to come to you through the power of your own insight, your own heart, and your own choice. You have to choose whom you want to experience this life as, who you have to choose where you're standing. If you want to see yourself as this 3D being only, or if you basically refuse to accept that you are 3D and want to see yourself as a spiritual being only, the Luciferian aspect of darkness. Or if you're recognizing that your 3D experience is part of a greater karma, so to speak, a greater developmental evolutionary process that allows you to evolve spiritually. Kind of like your master certification <laughs> to move on to a higher expression in the spiritual hierarchy. 
and to connect with these words, you really have to understand that there is more than just, you know, what we would call, I guess, our soul self. Okay, there is more than more hierarchies to that. Yeah, even within the spiritual realm, which if you think about it, if you really see yourself as a spirit being that has a physical experience, well, that means that you're just, you know, on a vacation here. Short amount of time. Yeah, that your actual home, your actual, you know, primary level of existence is in the spiritual. But without neglecting the 3D experience, taking it on as something that you have chosen from a higher, higher dimensional point of view to evolve spiritually, to evolve into, let's say, the, the next or the higher level of spirit being. And this is where religion and esoterics and so forth come in because a lot of these, the scholarly um, and, and esoteric scripture is about that. It's about those spiritual hierarchies. Even the Bible is about that, yeah, in heavens, so to speak. It only appears that way that it's about getting into heaven. Yeah, that's just for the untrained reader, yeah, or for the 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 believer that um, just takes sort of the secondhand information from other people who, you know, interpret what the Bible says for them. But everyone, and I can assure you that this occurs or happens with any kind of spiritual scripture out there, no matter what religion or what teaching it's derived from. Now, anyone who studies this and really feels into it and, you know, uh, uh, obviously uh, I wouldn't just study any spiritual teaching. I would only study the spiritual teachings that also offer a path, a systematic path to learning how these spiritual teachings came about and, and who give you the opportunity to learn them as well. Okay, everything else is just woo. -woo. Yeah, but everything that you can experience yourself and, and that shows ways basically how to fish, yeah, is worth studying. And when you do that, you'll find that they all have that they all have a common denominator. And that common denominator is about what happens on the spiritual level the consequences of your choices on the spiritual level, whether it's called karma or reckoning or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it's called. And you all here, you're part of, of a group of people who has chosen to work with these deeper spiritual aspects. I am 100% certain that all of you here already know that there is something in you that keeps record because you already differentiate between your ego and your true self. You already know that there is more yeah, to your choices than, you know, uh, sort of what is seen uh, on the outside. You already know that lying to yourself creates some kind of integrity issue in you, some kind of imbalance in you. And that's what you need to focus on. In simple terms, conscious manifestation is really about authenticity, integrity, yeah, and balance with yourself. So the breadcrumbs are already there, and your true self functions as a mediator, yeah, who who once in a while gives you, or you know, actually it does that all the time, but it appears uh, just to be once in a while because we we typically choose not to listen to it you know, on a normal everyday level. But that gives you cues, that gives you signals, that gives you these feedbacks. Yes, and obviously, Julian, you're absolutely right. It has to do with the willingness to see as well. Yeah, the conscious choice and wanting yeah, to really experience this, wanting to experience life and wanting to perceive yourself from within yourself as opposed to from out from the outside or just as a 3D material being. 
Yeah, so the difficulty nowadays is that we find this bifurcated world in front of us where we have these two realities as the seemingly only realities, namely, you know, the, the, the group of people who just looks at 3D life and uh, themselves and, you know, everything that has to do with life or existence as a materialistic kind of endeavor. And then on the other hand, you have, you know, the the woo-woo people, yeah, the new age people who see everything as a mysterium and don't question anything and believe in pretty much everything. Yeah, and somehow believe that life, that 3D life is a punishment and, you know, that you should get over with it. Yeah, and that karma is bad. And, uh, you know, if anything, yeah, okay, um, you know, I might as well, you know, try to be good, all right, but without actually having this inner reflection of why. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, is that obviously it's about the level of consciousness here that helps us to, to overcome and liberate ourselves from these predisposed uh, karmic ties or karmic dispositions uh, that you have already identified. And uh, depending, you know, on the level uh, how we look at this, there's obviously uh, things that are tied to um, our past lives. There's things that are tied to our family karma. There's things that are tied to our cultural, to our geographical, to our national, and also to our collective karma. But what it's truly about is about the evolution of our spirit being, of our, you know, the essence of who we are. And, you know, to keep things simple here and to conclude the main message of this discussion and workshop here, yeah, it is in you recognizing that all and everything that you put out into this world yeah, 3D, yeah, seen or unseen, even thoughts and dreams and emotions and so forth, create some kind of balance or imbalance. And that the goal is not like the ego prescribes, okay, uh, convenience, safety, and, uh, you know, uh, pleasure, but that the goal is to stay in the highest degrees of balance Meanwhile, choosing, making only conscious choices in regards to, and this is something, this is an internal process, that's an inside job, yeah, what makes you grow, what makes you evolve, so that, and this is the great mysterium for all of us, so that your spirit can grow. Yeah, and your spirit grows in the sense of its power, in the sense or in the, 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 the way it impacts. It impacts the world, it impacts others, it impacts, you know, it has an impact in the universe, the greater balance, the greater scales of things. And so leaning to, uh, you know, the, the most uh, spiritual teachings that I kind of agree with, you know, uh, but not to, to enter into this discussion, we have a workshop recording for spiritual being where I go a little deeper into this. Um, I offer you the, the interpretation here of, of the, the meaning and purpose of this life and the karma that uh, is created or undone through this life as the training program for us to basically, you know, develop into a higher spiritual hierarchy, and that would be angel. And, you know, this, these are just images, but um, an angel would be, you know, say, like in form of a guardian angel for somebody else. It would be uh, sort of the... The, the spirit being that has already lived 3D that assists others in living 3D but doesn't actually have to live it unless you can choose it. So whenever you kind of, you know, level up, you know, you can always choose lower 
expressions of yourself. They are all there. Yeah. But in order to what Cindy said earlier, yeah, what you feel, what we all feel as an instinct to serve others, to serve the greater good. So that's just here um, as as a, a wrap up, yeah, uh, like a contextualization. It doesn't matter whether you believe in angels or not. It's just a word, yeah, that signifies a sort of a higher hierarchy of spirit being, yeah, from the soul self that still needs to experience 3D to a level of existence where you can choose to experience 3D, yeah, but you can also stay in your spirit form, yeah, and assist others in this way. And uh, there's obviously more than that, yeah. So if you're really interested in the subject, then I would strongly recommend that you study some of these these traditional spiritual writings, or if you like it a little more modern. I mean, it's still already a hundred years old. But Rudolf Steiner uh, has. Uh, um, very, very profound insights to offer here um, in regards to sp spiritual hierarchies and um, how the, you know, these these different levels of heaven or the nine choirs of angels, yeah, those are all hints toward the different dimensions of spiritual existence and what all this is really about. You love this talk, yeah. Thank you, Cindy. You you particip you consciously participated, and it's wonderful, really, to engage into these discussions with you. I love them too. Are there any questions? Any? Sorry, my my slides here uh, got cut off. I suppose I don't know if you can actually see them, but they're stuck here uh, for me. But do you guys have any questions? in regards to our discussion here and how we unraveled the difference between conscious manifestation and karmic manifestation. Because if you don't have any questions, then I have one more question for you. How does destiny play into this. What do you think? You think there's some something like destiny? Anybody? All right, I'll chime in again. If you are, my thought on it is, if you're in balance and that karmic wheel has stopped from you being in balance, mm -hmm. it comes to you. It's the syntropy. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. Uh, and you're using lingo here, so I don't know if everybody understands what you're saying, but basically what you're saying you. is- you. Yeah, if you, you draw if you it to you. yourself, yeah. Very good. Yes, if you free yourself of your karmic attachments, of your karmic wheel, so to speak, um, you know, then manifestation is actually effortless because you're being, being pulled into your higher expression uh, no matter what. Yeah, it's really only our ego, you know, that keeps us in that karmic wheel. Yeah, so it's ultimately all about overcoming ego. And therefore, your destiny and karmic purpose of 3D is what? If ego is the only thing standing between you and effortless manifestation, or syntropy as you called it, What is the purpose of this 3D life, this karmic purpose? 
You already said it, Cindy. Yeah, I could, uh, I could describe yeah. it as uh, transcending the ego. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what 3D life is for. However many lifetimes it takes us, <laughs> that's in our hands. I mean, there's a lot of discussion about whether or not we're predestined in one lifetime. Uh, you know, uh, you know how much of that we can accomplish in one lifetime. You know, basically measured in the level of consciousness that we come into this life with already. But there's also uh, many examples of sort of miraculous manifestations and people where they could basically you know, jump lifetimes of experiences or undo karma of, of thousands of lifetimes. Yeah. So it's all in the willingness to step into that and to overcome. Yeah, to transcend. That's the, the spiritual term for overcoming. Yeah, the, the attachments of ego. So you guys here are in in a good place, I want to say. Because the Sacred Self-Healing Course, after all, is called 24 Steps Transcending the Ego and its Addictions. <laughs> yeah. Because on a 3D level, yeah, the way the ego does that with and for us is through the addictions. And the addictions are these, these karmic cycles, yeah, these attractions. And this closes the cycle of this discussion because at the very beginning of the discussion, I mentioned something, you know, about the attractions. And how it's actually coming from a place, yeah, that wants to keep us where we're at. We are attracted to what keeps us where we're at. And why is that? Because we have an ego. And why does the ego do this? It, it doesn't do this because the ego is mean or dark or whatever. It does that because it feels the safest toward the ego to recreate what it already knows. And if pain is what you've experienced predominantly, then it's very likely that you recreate pain because your ego will feel the most comfortable, the most secure with pain. Simply because it's familiar with it. It knows it. And why does it, why does our ego choose something that it knows over something that is good for you or that would allow you to grow? Because our ego is a part of our psyche that is in place to handle our own mortality, the aspects of our own 3D existence. In other words, the fact that we have to die one day. And so the ego's biggest fear, yeah, and therefore also, you know, the, the biggest propensity is the unknown. Anything that is, a, that is unknown is to be avoided. And we've already worked out that the only thing that can really make us grow yeah, is if we break the pattern, if we try something new, if we step into the unknown. So here is where fundamentally karma and ego meet. Your ego brings in the paradigm of avoiding the unknown. And your higher spirit being, the spirit being in you, brings in the desire to transcend the fear of the unknown, to explore the unknown, to make the unknown known. And that is then what we call consciousness. So transcending ego basically happens through, yeah, in simple words, facing fear. Only so can we grow.
not just we as 3D beings, but also our spirit. And only though so can we feel fulfillment. And only so can we get this feedback back from our heart. Yeah, something that feels like happiness. And peace, inner peace. When we grow, and we grow through overcoming fears, which is basically from a psychological point of view, you know, basically categorized as overcoming or transcending you know, our ego attachments. And spiritually seen as transcending the ego. That's where karma and ego yeah, and conscious manifestation, that's where they meet. And the peace in you that has the free will, that has the choice, yeah, that has that power of choice, is coming to you via your consciousness. Your job is to allow that to happen, is to allow your consciousness to come to you, yeah? And you support that by making choices that allow you to make the unconscious conscious. A bit mental here, but I hope that uh, this makes sense and that this helped you to clarify some of these aspects and, and maybe also some of these transfigurations around karma and the mystification around karma. And it's not linear. And there's a much greater cycle at work than you think it is. But uh, the main block and the main fear that we all have is that everything ends when we die. And if that's what you use as your, your basically objective in manifestation, you're in trouble. Because that inevitably makes you focus on all the things that you could lose, all the things that you could change, all the things that you are afraid of. So again, same thing, just a different way of saying it. If you want to consciously manifest, if you want to consciously co-create your life and you know increase your impact on other lives and the universe itself, you need to be willing to face your fears. You need to be willing to step into the unknown, into the unconscious. And this is what we're doing here in the Sacred Self-Healing Community. We consciously do that, layer for layer, so that we get used to facing, you know, the stuff that our ego resists. And once we do that, once we get used to that, we are creating a new baseline of normal. And that baseline then is called growth. You recondition or reprogram yourself to fearless growth because you understand the greater impact of that that is way beyond just this 3D life. I hope that these words were clear and easy enough to understand that they inspired you, that they helped you to gain clarity within yourself again, yeah? I cannot tell you what to think or what to do, but I can teach you how to think more clearly, how to make more conscious choices, how to become more aware of what it is that is in the way of you co-creating fulfillment, you have more truth, more love, more freedom in your life. Because truth, love and freedom, guys, those are resonances, those are values that have a significance in the spiritual existence as well. They're at the core of all existence. So with that, guys, I'm wishing you sweet dreams. If you haven't done a vision board, 
do a vision board, guys. This is an extremely important exercise. Do it in that sense, on that level of consciousness that we discussed this here today. Not based on accomplishments, not based on, based on having, getting, or owning. Based on how you want to feel. And communicate this to your spirit being in imagery and not words or, you know, a benchmark such as money on your bank account. You, the spirit part of your being doesn't know what to do with that. And most of you don't have the discipline to detach your fears from it. Which means you're sending mixed messages to your own spirit being. Communicate how you want to feel to your spirit being with feelings, with your heart, with imagery, with inner imagery, simple. You can use music, you can use colors, you can use sound sense, you can use, you know, visions, drawings, paintings, it doesn't matter, Google pictures, for as long as you can feel it in your heart. This mediator piece here that I talked about, how you step, that allows you to step into this feedback with your own spirit being, happens through your heart, like Cindy found out. And so you have to communicate through your heart. Yeah. Do a vision board with imagery, not images, imagery. It communicates to your own spirit being how you want to feel. What makes you feel peaceful? What makes you feel more loved? What makes you feel more liberated? What makes you feel standing in truth and balance? All right. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.